Number 43. Find the length of the arc of a circle of radius 10 centimeters subtended by the central angle of 50 degrees. All right. So let's draw a little picture. Okay. We've got a little, let's draw a circle first. Okay. And what we can do inside the circle is we can draw our y and x axes. All right. Now, uh, they're giving us angles in terms of degrees, so maybe what I'll do here is I will label this in terms of degrees. You know this is 0 degrees and this is 90, right? We always work from the positive x and then work counterclockwise if we're dealing with positive degrees, okay? That's 180 and then that's 270. So it says the central angle here is about 50 degrees. So you know this, right? The picture would look just like this. It would look maybe right about there, right? That the angle in here is going to be 50 degrees. Okay, good enough. Now, what's the radius of that particular circle? Well, they told us in the problem that the radius is 10 centimeters. Okay, so that means that this particular length right there is going to be 10 centimeters. Right, the, the length of that red line. And what do they ask you to find then? They're asking you to find this arc length right here that I'm going to outline in blue. Okay, that's what they're asking you to find. It turns out that this arc length, which is known as S, okay, go figure, right? Should my, I think it should be L, but anyway, the arc length S, all right, is equal to the central angle measurement theta in radians, multiplied then by the radius of the circle. Now, the unit here for radius totally doesn't matter. You can do whatever unit you want, but this better be in terms of radians, not degrees, okay? So, What's the problem? Well, the problem is I can plug in the radius of 10 centimeters, that's fine, but uh, I can't plug in my 50 degree measurement. But what do you know this has to be in? Radians. So the question then becomes, it's not no longer what's the arc length, because you know if you can find the state in radians, you know the arc length. The question then becomes, what the heck is 50 in terms of radians? So there's a couple of ways we can do it. Pictorially, though, consider this. Go back to the circle picture over here. I'm going to change the color. Consider this, that if this were measured in radians instead, this would be zero radians, right? This would then be pi over two radians. This would then be pi radians there at the 180, and then this would be three halves pi, okay? So if this represents zero radians here, and this is then a half of a pi, well, this has to be less than half of a pi, right? It has to be greater than zero, but less than half of a pi. Okay, let's see if our conversions now, oh, that's what we did in the last section. Let's see if our conversions help us. Okay, so to convert from basically what we got to do is we got to convert 50 degrees into then radians. How do we do that? We first need to know a known relationship, right? Pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. After you know that relationship, what we're going to do is we're then going to write down our given value of 50 degrees. We're going to set up our conversion fraction here, okay? And the values that go into this conversion fraction are from the known relationship between the two. Since I want to convert from degrees, the degree of measurement here in your relationship goes in the bottom. The reason why is because those units will cancel. And then consequently, the other value here in your relationship must go in the numerator. Notice the radians won't cancel, and that is fantastic because I don't want them to cancel. I want my answer in terms of radians, okay? Now, all we have to do is literally calculate, all right? And by calculating, we can simplify first, right? This you see is a 50, this is a 180. So maybe we can reduce that at least by 10, right? So that's five and this is 18. And then is there a value that goes into five and 18? Well, no, right? So that means that the final value here is gonna be five pi, the pi doesn't go anywhere, all over 18. Now you can leave the answer in terms of pi, or you could multiply this all out, five times 3.14, right, is then going to be, um, what does it work out to be exactly? I was going to estimate, obviously, you could do 5 times 3 is about 15, but 5 times pi exactly is going to be about 15.7, okay, 15.7, and then divide that by 18, right? So that's about then 0.87 radians, all right? So, in other words, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to write it out like this. 5 over 18 pi radians. Now, let me ask you a question. 
is 5 over 18 less than, you know, this is pi over 2, but remember pi over 2 can be rewritten as 1 half pi. So it's 5 over 18 less than a half. Would you rather have 5 eighteenths of something? Well, it depends on the something, right? So, yeah, it depends on the something. Um, we'll leave it at that. So would you rather have, though, 5 eighteenths of something? Of let's say, would you rather have 5 eighteenths of a million dollars or would you rather have a half of a million dollars, right? All of a sudden, people people are like, oh, yeah, no, I know they have half, right? I'd rather have half, right? When you look at the numbers first, it's like 5 eighteenths and one half. Oh, man, I don't know which one's greater. All of a sudden, would you rather have 5 eighteenths of a million or half a million? Everyone's like, oh, yeah, half. Well, right, you know the answer already. So the half is larger, and that should make sense because that's what we were saying here. This angle of 50 degrees should work out to be less than half of a pi, which it is. This is 5 eighteenths of a pi. Now all we got to do is just plug it in. Okay, this is 5 pi over 18. That's then multiplied by my 10 centimeters, and we can reduce this if we need. Right, this can be reduced to 5. This can re be reduced to then 9 because we're basically you know, dividing everything by two there. And then voila, five times five is going to be 25, 25 pi. And that's all divided by nine centimeters. That is good. You can take out your calculator and actually find the exact answer. Well, not the exact answer, but an estimated value. So 25 multiplied by pi, which is 3.14, all divided by nine. And that works out to be about 8.7. So literally, if you were to, so this is 8.7 centimeters. So if you were to take now, this blue arc length, and you were to then pretend you use the string to measure this, right? A curved string, and then you took this, right? And then you, oop, and then you took this, okay? And then you straightened it out, so maybe it would look about this long, right? And you measured it from top to bottom, 8.7 centimeters. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. If it did, like and subscribe. It helps us out tremendously. Um, also, check out some of our other videos. We've got thousands of problems out there for you. Thousands. Okay, chemistry, physics, pre-calculus here. Calculus is coming soon and biology and a whole bunch of other subjects. We solve specific problems. All right. I think that's the best way to learn by doing specific examples. So even if you're not using and what we do is we use the OpenStax textbooks. You can go to their website, download the books for free. That's great. They're a great company. And um, what you can then do is find similar problems. All right, find similar problems uh, to the ones you might be having because let's face it, whether you're taking pre-calculus or chemistry, the problems are basically, they're, they're all the same types of questions. All right, and I guarantee if you sift through the book, you'll be able to find a very, very similar, if not identical problem to the one you're having. And we have a video for that. Check out our channel under the playlist section. We try to keep everything organized for you there. All right, we'll see you soon. Best of luck with your studies.